I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Maserati Rick in Detroit Convertible bird in Miami Graduated summa cum laude Strip club made a tsunami Carlton Hines with the ball game Grateful Edmonds with the snowflakes Craig Pettis in the M-Town Sal Magluta with the boat game Falcon with the cocaine Like Freeway Ricky with the plug game Like Monster Cody in South Central Larry Davis from Close Range To answer the question of Can the police search your cell phone Without your permission and without a warrant and the Supreme Court in Riley versus California said absolutely not. In fact, the courts have said that there's really only four situations where the police are allowed to do this. First of all, if they have a valid search warrant. Secondly, if you give them consent, if you agree to allow them to search your phone. And I tell people never, ever give the police consent to search your phone, even if you think there's nothing incriminating on there, because you never know how the authorities will try to use your data against you. The third situation where police are allowed to search your phone is at the airport or at the borders. If you cross the border or you go through security at the airport, courts have said you have a lesser expectation of privacy and oftentimes the police are able to look through your phone without a warrant. The fourth is emergency situations. So for example, suppose you're suspected of being a kidnapper and the police have reason to believe that the location of the kidnapping victim is on your phone. By the time they got a warrant, it would be too late to save that person. In an emergency situation like that, often the police are allowed to search your phone. Although those are very rare and exceptional situations. Exodus has obtained yep. these police photographs showing the bullet riddled SUV involved in a murder in Maniac. Investigators say 32 year old I. Dean Fulton was inside that SUV when he was ambushed Tuesday night in the 300 block of DuPont Street. Sources tell Action News that Fulton was a major drug dealer and had been under investigation by the FBI. At this point, no one has yet been arrested. Residents in Maniac tonight are on edge after a man was executed in the neighborhood there. Action News reporter Walter Perez joining us now with the very latest on this investigation. And yeah, Walter, this has residents talking. No doubt about it, Shara. You know, that gunman launches ambush from a driveway across the street here, killing the victim in the garage behind me. But Action News has since learned that the victim was being investigated by the FBI. After his death, he was found with several, a dozen cell phones on him, at least one gun retrieved from his apartment, and Action News hearing from several law enforcement sources that the victim was a major drug dealer in a region whose life came to a violent conclusion. People who live in this quiet Maniunk neighborhood say they never heard anything like it. We were watching TV and it almost sounded like somebody banging on metal, but it was too rhythmic. What Janie Miller heard was the sound of an AK-47 style rifle being unloaded into a vehicle driven by 43-year-old Dean Fulton. Fulton was just pulling into his garage on the 300 block of DuPont Street when the ambush unfolded a bit past 8 o'clock last night. Investigators say by the time it was over, more than 40 shots had been fired. Tiana McLeod, who lives a few doors down, says it was terrifying. I felt my son, I said, baby, we get on the ground, get on the ground. It was about 10 or 15 initial shots. When it was over, Fulton had been shot repeatedly. Police quickly arrived to find the victim still in the driver's seat with his vehicle engine running and smoke rising from the scene. Fulton was pronounced dead a short time later. People who live here say the risk of these things happening goes up as we know less and less about the people who live next door. People got to know people. That's, that's the problem. Everybody has a dog, but people don't know people. That's why people live here is because they think it's like a safer area. Um, but you, know, you, you never know. Meanwhile, the FBI just left moments ago with boxes and bags filled with items from inside the victim's apartment. Safe to say much more on this story coming up in the days and weeks to come. Reporting live from Maniunk, Walter Perez, Channel 6 Action News. Rick? All right, Walter, thank you. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop-A-Lot. Mob. 
ties. We on our way to Pennsylvania with it. Philadelphia. Shout out to all my guys in Philly. Y'all already know what it is. We running through the city. Now, today, we are going to be covering a very elusive figure. Um, but in the case of covering them, this is definitely going to be a learning list. So, y'all definitely, definitely pay attention. Keep your ears open. Now, the guy that we're going to be covering today is going to be a guy by the name of I. Dean Fulton or Dean Fulton. Or we just going to call him Mr. Anonymous because it's yeah, well, you ain't finding much on him for for him to be who the authorities allege. You would think it would be a lot more bigger history, but I'm going to dive into what we do know and pretty much talk a little bit about the heinous way that he was taken out um, and try to shed some light to his life before that massacre that happened. Now, based on my knowledge, everything um, is going to kind of center right around 2010. Now, and that's where the, the online presence of Mr. Fulton begins. Now, we listened to those videos at the beginning, and I know some are wondering, well, what does this have to do with police searching your cell phone or having a right to search your cell phone? That's going to be a big, big part of pretty much Dean Fulton's life. Um, almost, it looks like 10 years of his life was held up by that same particular scenario that we explained so without further more i'm gonna get right into it now in the early morning hours of june 15 2010 the gentleman by the name of michael toll called 911 and reported that he had been shot now police responded locating toll in the vehicle on the sidewalk between a legally parked car and a house that was on 56th Street and Florence Avenue in Philadelphia. Anybody from that area, we need y'all in the comment box below. If y'all was around 2010, definitely. Now, police will go on to say that Toll informed them that a guy named Jeff had reached through his passenger side window of his vehicle and shot him and then fled on foot in an unknown direction. Now, the shooting occurred on the 5400 block of Florence Avenue. We need y'all. I'm telling y'all, we need you on the comment box, man. Rep your set. Now, Toad described Jeff as a slim black male wearing shorts and a white t-shirt. Toad had multiple close-range gunshot wounds on the upper right side of his body. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. Now, police photographed and searched Toad's vehicle. There was a wad of $20 bills on the floor between the driver's seat and the door frame and the personal organizing and the personal organizing organizer <laughs> containing calendar money and other papers located on the front passenger seat now police recovered two fire shell cartridges one winchester brand and one carbon brand from the floor from the floor of the car now a latent palm print was on the roof of the passenger side of the vehicle now the cell phone in toll's hand that he used to call 911 was still there on the scene. Now, the call log and Toll's, and Toll's phone revealed that in the hour preceding the shooting, he exchanged several brief calls with an individual listed in the phone as Jeff, with the phone number ending in 7343. Now, police attempted to contact that person associated with that number, but discovered it was linked to a prepaid phone with no subscriber information. Now, also within an hour of the shooting, Toll placed a lengthier call to an in individual referred to as Red. Um, and they had a number. We're not even going to put their number out there. But police learned that that number belonged to a woman by the name of Rosetta Woods. Now, ultimately, Toll would succumb to his injuries seven days after the shooting on June 17, 2010. 
that same that very same morning and this is very ironic that same morning police received a call about drug activity and a man with a gun parked behind 600 oh well 6032 Lindbergh Boulevard in Philadelphia now all my people from Philly let me know how far apart these these scenes are and when I when I say how far apart I'm talking about Lindbergh Boulevard or the 6000 block of Lind Lindbergh Lynn Dirk Boulevard and I'm talking about 56th Street or the 5400 block of Florence. Now, after after the call, police responded. They found several individuals around the 2002 Green Mercury Marquis. After observing a gun, a host and cell phones in the vehicle, police took four individuals into custody. It's going to be a guy by the name of Randolph Bell, another guy by the name of Anthony Bird, another gentleman by the name of Eric Adams. And lo and behold, another gentleman by the name of I. Dean Fulton. Now, Fulton was sitting inside the vehicle. Police seized a smartphone from Fulton's person at the time of his arrest. Put police subsequently obtained a search warrant for the vehicle as part of the investigation into the violations of uni of Uniform Firearms Act. So I don't know if that's something specifically from Philly. Anybody that been charged with that or know anything about that y'all let me know and i think philly's a commonwealth state so they do you how they wanna and i could tell you that now um they recovered everything from the vehicle now the phones were not placed on property receipts but they were transferred to the homicides division and that was on the day after on june 18 2010 along with Bell, Bird, and Adams as part of what was now a murder investigation that was recording regarding Toll's death. Now, upon receipt of the phones, this is very important, the lead detective, a guy by the name of John Harkins, he opened each phone, powered them on, and searched the phone's menu to find out what number was associated with the phone. It was determined that the number for one of the recovered phones, a Samsung flip cell phone, was the target number and the same number that was assigned to Jeff in Toll's murder case. Detective Harkin did not secure a warrant. He would go on to access the information in the cell phone. He left the flip phone powered on and monitored the phone's incoming calls and texts by viewing either its internal or external phone display screen. So the following day, he answered a call on the phone identifying him identifying himself as a homicide detective at the detective's request the caller a female by the name of heather warrington agreed to meet with him and she would go on to reveal the identity of little jeff now we're going to cut to the chase now that we have the groundwork so what would go on to happen from then is the police would arrest Idine fulton for the murder of mr toll and it would be almost a 10 year a 10 year span because this all occurred in 2010 i seen where he was up for appeal on february 21st 2018 i did see that his murder conviction because he was convicted of said murder i did see where that murder conviction was overturned he was freed and then we have what happened to him in philadelphia so it's going to be a lot of different scenarios people are gonna put out there they're gonna say well he was a major drug trafficker so that is part of the business you get that shit on the house when you deal with that shit and then he also was part of this murder investigation and i did see i ain't gonna mention the names but i did see some of the people would go on to corroborate that he did confess to them a murder to the police department and those was one several of the members that was in that vehicle with him um so who knows what transpired from that because a lot of times man you just uh, some most people not just gonna let a nigga tell on them and slide so if, whether you beat it or not so that shit that shit is all up for debate now y'all make sure y'all follow me on instagram on twitter it's your boy pop a lot p-o-p -P underscore a underscore l-o-t we're going to be back with some more real trill spill shit. Hit the bell right under this video if y'all want to know when this trill spill shit is dropping. We're going to be in your city very soon. Y'all get at me in the comment box below. Direct message me on Instagram. The pictures, hit my email, call my phone, stop me in the street. 
CC me on emails, however y'all want to handle it, man. Y'all already know what it is. The mob, 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 mob ties.